Today, I'm Professor Kim, and we're doing a practice problem related to circuits, and in this one we're talking about Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's current and voltage law. So let's get to the practice problem. Oh, and it's E 2.7 in this book, Irwin, 12th edition. Okay, let's go. So here's our problem, and the first thing we do is read the problem, look at the circuit, and write down what we need to solve for. So, find the values of current Ix and I1. So we look at our circuit over here, and we see Ix is on the leftmost branch going downward, and I1 is going from left to right over the top resistor. So we want to find those two currents. Let's look at the components. We have three resistors, so maybe we'll be using Ohm's law. Think about it. We have a constant current source, and we have a dependent current source over here, and that depends on Ix. Okay. So we have a lot of different tools. Oh, first let's write down what we're solving for. We are solving for Ix. We want to find that value. And then I1. So we need to find those two. Looking at the circuit, there we can try to take a few different approaches. We notice that we have all the currents, we're dealing with current sources. So Let's see if we can apply Kirchhoff's current law to each of these parts and see if we can get anything out of that. So first, let's look over in the upper left part. We have, let's draw where the currents are going from. We have I1 going from left to right. We have six milliamps coming up here through the current source. And we have, I'm just going to redraw this arrow. This is Ix through here. Okay, why don't we write that out as a law? So they're going to write KCL, and I'm just going to call this uh, the one, the first iteration of that. Or maybe we could do A, just so we don't confuse it with uh, the one we have. So A, and we're going to write out KCL here. So remember, we have the currents in one direction, so into the branch is 6 amps and out of the branch is 1x, I say ix and i1. So let's just write that out. So I'm just going to write 6 milliamps equals ix plus i1. You say, but well, we don't know the values. Well, we're trying to solve for ix and i1, so we just write them as variables for now. Okay? Let's look at the next. Uh, intersection, this node over here, and let's kind of draw the currents coming in and out of this uh, intersection, as we'll call it. So here we have one milliamp coming down here. Oh, and so I'll just label these, sorry. A, A, intersection A and intersection B. Um, pretty much going through through this point here. Okay, so again, so this one we have one milliamp coming down. We have one amp, it's going to continue through this and come to the other side. So we're going to have I1 coming in here. And then here we have 1.5 Ix. We don't know what that is yet, but we know the direction of the current. So let's just draw that right here, 1.5 Ix. And you can see now we've defined this current is going in, I1, and these two currents are coming out. So let's apply KCL, again, Kirchhoff's current law, at intersection B here. So KCL at this second intersection at the node. And we see we have I1 is the current coming in. And then you have two currents coming out. One is going to be 1 milliamp. And then the other is going to be plus 1.5 Ix. All right, so what we've done by applying Kirchhoff's current law in two different, two different nodes, so the intersection A, I guess we could also call this node A, up here, and then B over here, is we have two different equations, linearly independent equations, they're from different um, properties of the circuit, and they have two independent equations, and they both have I1 and Ix. So we have two unknowns and two equations, so we should be able to solve for that. So now just treat this as a math problem and let's do, let's solve it. So we notice right away that I1 
is already written over here. So we can just substitute that in here. And let's rewrite that so they have one equation in terms of all ix. So now I guess this one will become 6 milliamps equals ix. And then plus, we're going to move this into there. So it's 1 milliamp uh, plus 1.5 ix. Now we're just solving for ix. Move minus 1 milliamps, so we're going to have 5 milliamps here. And we're going to have 1 plus 1 1.5, which is 2.5 uh, ix. And this is just a scalar, so there's no units here. We're going to divide by 2.5. Now we're going to get ix is equal to just 2, 2 milliamps. All right, so actually we have found our first one, so we can move that on up here. I'm going to go ahead and write it up here. 2 milliamps because we have solved that. Okay, now what do we do? Well, we've, we're solving for two variables. We know our first variable. We can now put this one back into here and solve there. So let's write that out. So I1 is equal to 1 milliamp plus 1.5 times 2 milliamps. Alright, so we're going to get 1 milliamp plus 3 and that is just going to be 4 milliamps. All right, so now we can write that over here. 4 milliamps is our circuit. So that's our answer as well. So we've solved it. We can box our final answer here. So we found what we're looking for. Now that we have the answer, let's kind of just go back and see what we have. So in our circuit, we have we had 6 milliamps coming in here. We had some of the current coming out here. Ix, we found that that's 2 milliamps, and then the 4 milliamps going here. So those all add up, that makes sense. So current will be flowing through here and through here. And then current will also be going down here, and then also flowing through here. And the amount flowing through here is going to be 1.5 times Ix, which is 2 milliamps. So 3 milliamps will be flowing through here. Everything adds them up in our circuit, and we only had to use Kirchhoff's current law applied two times to solve for our two unknown variables, in this case, the currents in our circuit. So that's how we can find our answer and solve this circuit.